Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you have had an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with the review for the council. So as many of you already know, Vampire the Master Race Swan Song is being developed by Big Bad Wolf Studios. They are an independent French studio whose only other game is the council. This made me interested in the game because I'd like to know why Paradox Interactive put so much trust in them and what we can expect from Swan Song. Now that I have finally finished the game, let's first talk about what I liked. The mysteries surrounding this game are fantastic, at least for the first couple of episodes. You play as Louis de Riche, who is a member of the Golden Order, a group focused on guiding the world by placing members at high levels of leadership in countries across the globe. Louis's mother has gone missing after visiting the private island of the enigmatic Lord Mortimer. Louis comes to the island searching for his mother and is quickly drawn into the political intrigue happening there. Assisting him in navigating conversations with Mortimer and other residents on the island is a level up system almost wholly concerned with Louis's mental faculties. Characters you meet throughout the game have immunities or weaknesses to specific types of dialogue, so it's important for Louis to be as skilled as possible. There's not a single node you can upgrade that is wasted. Politics, psychology, science, etiquette, and a host of other options all come into play at one point or another. Even agility, the least useful skill, allows you to reach higher objects and pick up more items. In addition, Louis can pick up books during episodes that will boost the scores for his abilities. Traits are gained based on actions he takes in the game and they will also boost his ability scores. There are items you can pick up throughout the game to help in this regard as well. Royal Jelly restores two effort points which are used to activate your abilities. Golden Elixir removes negative statuses that can occur usually from a confrontation or by triggering a character's immunity. Carmelite Water makes your next ability use free. Finally, Devil's Thorn reveals the weaknesses and immunities of the person you are talking with. You are only able to stack five of each item, so you have to use them carefully, and when possible, remember areas you can return to to restock. By searching levels thoroughly and picking certain dialogue options, you can reveal a character's immunities and weaknesses before you actually need to use them. I list the character models as something I don't like about this game, but I honestly love the way the camera focuses on their faces when looking at this information. I think it's a super cool effect that looks even better in Swan Song. Everything Louis has will be put to the test when he experiences confrontations in the game. Confrontations are intense dialogues whose result can have long lasting effects on your playthrough. These sections are superb. Even when your life isn't on the line, there is a real sense of pressure and dread. When they work out exactly the way you want, there's definitely a sense of accomplishment. There's a few puzzles, and I think they are great in this game. A couple are extremely challenging, but not in ways I think are unfair. You are given enough clues to solve them on your own, but if you can't, then abilities can be used to provide guidance in multiple ways. Even during the really difficult puzzles, I never felt like I was completely walled in. Finally, there's a wide array of potential endings to this game. Seriously, the amount of variation seems staggering. This creates a cool system where quote unquote screwing up something in the game can still allow you to get a really nice ending. All right, now let's get to the things I am neutral on. Part of what makes the mystery so strong are the intriguing characters that are woven into this historical story. You will regularly have conversations with well-known figures such as George Washington, Napoleon Bonaparte, and Don Manuel Godoy. On the one hand, it is fun interfacing with historically legendary figures, and there are a couple of instances where historical events impact your conversations in the game. My main issue is the portrayal of George Washington, who was six foot two and 200 pounds plus during his presidency. He had the body of a military man through and through. I don't understand why the game portrays him as shorter than everybody else, physically unimposing, and honestly unimpressive except for one brief dinner speech. Napoleon comes off as much more assertive and is never dwarfed despite being 5'6 in real life. I don't understand why these changes were made and it threw me off every time I spoke with them. 
The voice acting and writing in this game is spotty. I would say the writing gets steadily better as the series goes on, but some characters either don't have consistent accents or don't have accents that match where they historically come from. Louis' voice actor is solid, and I like him as a character, but the manner in which he speaks comes off as inconsistent across the five episodes. This is not bad enough to significantly lower the quality of the series, but it is noticeable. The main villain is superbly voice acted throughout the series. Finally, in a previous video, I mentioned that you cannot skip dialogue, but that's actually not correct. You have to play an entire episode first, before the game will allow you to skip dialogue in that episode. I would prefer to be able to just skip it, but accept this as a happy medium. Quick note before we get into what I don't like about the game. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. All right, now let's get into what I disliked about this game. Let's start with the obvious, character models are not good. Animations are stiff and it definitely shines through when you're having conversations, which you are constantly doing. I would argue over time you get used to it and the issue doesn't weigh down the game, but it's jarring at first. Far more important is that the story and mysteries collapse under the weight of revelations this game provides. For the first two episodes, things are going great as questions are answered and new questions are revealed. The third episode upends the story in a way that isn't necessarily bad, but needs time to provide context and develop. The next two episodes don't properly focus on the new revelations, causing things to start feeling rushed and half-baked. I hate to say this, but I kind of feel like the game would have been better served by being a little more bland and reserved. They tried to go way out there, but either didn't have the time, will, or resources to see it through, and the game suffers for it. Worse still is how those changes impact your romance. Depending on choices made in the game, you are able to romance Emily. I felt like this romance was handled very well. Emily could be warm and seem like a good partner, but at the same time, you never really knew where she stood, so things were always interesting. The mid-game reveals heavily impact this relationship in a way that is never resolved. My game ending did not make it clear at all where Emily and I stood. I've looked at all the endings and Emily is always either dead or you just don't know where your relationship goes from there. Since we are on the subject of Emily, I think the way her character is treated in general is extremely disrespectful. She is dressed in a gratuitous manner and operates as a woman who exchanges her body for favors and information. While all the other guests of the island are portrayed as men of stature, competence, and integrity, the one major female character is portrayed as someone who cannot get what she wants without whoring herself. That is not only out of place, considering the context, but also very unnecessary. I played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines multiple times, so clearly I don't have an issue with wonderful jiggly things in my face while I talk to women in video games. I'm not trying to be a prude about this, but the character just wasn't treated properly. All in all, I enjoy my time with the council, and I definitely think it is worth playing. Going through this, I can see the similarities it has with Swan Song, and I look forward to seeing what Big Bad Wolf Studios does with that game. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.